Good evening, I'm David. Welcome back to Cinema Flicks and Music Picks. I'm your host with the most, the beast with the least. And today we're talking about Dune, the 2021, you struggle to remember what year it is, 2021 Denis Villeneuve film. Uh, been out in America for a little while on 4K, but it's out tomorrow um, in this set trial. A um, couple of stickers on the front there, but not to worry about that. This video um, is dedicated to Yoon Dougal, um, the only person I know who also quotes from Dune as much as I do. Uh, but yoon has been in rehab recently, uh, too much spice, his eyes have turned blue, so uh, get well to Yoon, we love you. Um, so, Yoon, everybody, Jonathan, you also get shout outs since you keep asking for them. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about this one, Dune in general, Dune, not Dune the month. Um, and some other June releases. So, um, I was a bit trepidatious when they announced that they were coming back with June because, you know, people said it was unfilmable. We had the Alejandro Jodorowsky's June documentary, and that, you know, but that falling apart. David Lynch's one was an infamous production, flopped to the box office. But then I reminded myself that fear is the main killer from June um, and leads to total obliteration um, and I thought well we'll see how it turns out um, and luckily we got a damn good June movie out of it so this came out tomorrow as I said but this came yesterday from uh, Amazon it woke me up nice and early but you know the sleeper must awake June quote number two There's lots of June quotes um, there's not a lot to be said about this film because I don't want to spoil too much if you haven't uh, seen the film but I think we can cover the basics because it's not a particularly deep plot um, and I think you need to go back to Dune the novel to really understand why this works and maybe why the David Lynch one and uh, Hodorowsky's one didn't. Um, Denis Villeneuve wisely made the decision to have this as Dune part one, although as you can tell it's just called Dune, so even on the spread they're not calling it part one, although in here we do have a little advert with QR code for Dune part two, so it looks as though they've come up with a rather exciting sequel title, part two, um, and there's a discs over here, one space coloured uh, brown 4k, and this blurry disc is blue as the Freeman's eyes. So there we go. And in case you want to have a picture of the wrap around, there we go. There's Paul and his mother avoiding Mr. Sandworm. Bring me a dream. Um, so there's nothing really unboxed with a steel book. That's the problem with steel books. But um, June in general, um, David Lynch tried it. Hod Rescue tried it, as I said. They tried to do too much, too fast, too soon, with too little money and too little time, and too many studio execs. This is the first time that major studio Warners has given a filmmaker with a vision, which Denis Villeneuve always has, because he made Blade Runner 2049, um, given him the time, the money, and the opportunity um, to do a visionary version of a visionary novel. So it's one artist uh, developing another artist. Not that David Lynch obviously isn't an artist, and so is Hodorowsky, but they weren't afforded the opportunities that Denis Villeneuve um, was given um, and neither of them were going to split their movie into two like he did which is the smartest decision because it made this film a reasonable one running length and it meant he didn't need to cut bits out and condense it too much uh, which I think is one of the problems with other versions of the film um, the, the aborted version um, so if you haven't read um, Dune uh, the original Frank Herbert I think it was 1965 First of all, do so because it's fantastic. But this essentially takes you about a third of the way through it, which doesn't sound like much. It makes sound sound like it should be therefore mean in a trilogy rather than um, two movies. But really, the rest of the book can be done in a single two and a half hour film because um, this is pretty much all set up for for where we are here. Paul and his mother um, in the in the the dunes of Dune. Um, out with the, the Freeman, where Paul becomes more deep. Um, he takes the name of the small rodent creature from the desert, 
Um, so they pull a little scene from from slightly later in the novel where Paul proves himself to the tribe and stick it at the end of this to give it more action climax. Um, and the Baron's forces from House Harkonnen invading um, and taking over the planet, um, Arrakis, um, is, is a pretty spectacular way to end that. So I think Denis Villeneuve found exactly the cut-off point where you should say, right, this is where we stop our story for now and pick it up again. Um, so I don't think we'll see the sequel, unfortunately, for another few years because it doesn't seem like it'll be a particularly fast movie to make. Um, but the good news is that um, it's definitely happening because this was a bit of a box office success, which um, I don't think anybody really was was guaranteeing because, you know, previous versions haven't been. Um, but this one was, and I think partially because it was one of the first films released in the pandemic where cinemas were completely open again. Um, so people were going to this just because it was a big film again, um, perhaps more than just because it was Dune. Um, so I think the film benefited in a way that, I don't know, Godzilla vs Kong didn't, or you know, other flops from last year, like Suicide Squad, for example, lost a lot of money. Um, but yeah, um, so it's a fantastic film. It's well cast. Um, Denis Villeneuve went back to the novel and decided, I'm not going to take into account any of the casting that David Lynch did or Hodge Rice Cube is considering. Um, I'm going to do my own thing based on the Herbert stuff. So he cast it from scratch. Um, but he still managed to obviously get some big stars in there. You've got, you know, um, Oscar Isaac as, as uh, Leto, uh, Timothy Chalamet as Paul, um, his son, and they actually look quite similar at points, which I didn't think going in. I'm not a big fan of Timothy Chalamet, but he's actually very good as Paul. He's got the naivety at the start, but you can believe that he would become more deep as, as the story goes on. We'll, we'll need to see how that develops, but yeah, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt for the moment. And then you've got like Josh Brolin and you've got um, uh, Jason Momoa, who I normally, but I, I like I like both of them in, in this. Um, I do like Josh Brolin anyway, but I'm not too keen on Jason Momoa. Um, so everybody's well cast. The film looks amazing, as you'd imagine from a guy that's just done Blade Runner 2049. The film is visually astonishing. It's not just good. Um, and it's, it's a terrific little, you know, tight film, which in June has never really been tight and somehow Denis Villeneuve has managed to make it, so um, one thing that worries me though, if you look at the hype sticker in the middle, it says uh, the next Star Wars is here. Uh, I hope Hollywood aren't expecting that because this is not Star Wars and it's not supposed to be Star Wars. Uh, read Dune and read the sequel novels and the continuation novels done by um, Herbert's son, was it Kevin G. Anderson or uh, Alan Dean Foster, one of the two. Um, because it sets up a whole mythology that's um, much deeper than something like Star Wars in the movie form. Um, it's more of a parable, um, it's more of a myth than the Star Wars-like hero's journey, Joseph Campbell kind of thing. Um, so I don't think they should be aiming for Star Wars because to me this is more like you should be aiming for the audience of Game of Thrones. That makes more sense to me because you've got all the elements you've got um, politics, you've got warring houses, you've got people with multiple names, and you've got a million characters. So if people can handle Game of Thrones, then they can handle the world of Dune. Um, that was always labelled, you know, it labelled as the issue with Dune, that um, it's, it's unfilmable, it's too complicated. I don't think it is in this age where if people can remember that Daenerys has got ten different names in Game of Thrones, I'm sure they can handle Dune. Um, you only need to remember Paul and uh, Moadib, so you know, I'm sure, I'm sure you're okay with that, you're smart. Um, so yeah, it's a really good watch, um, but I'm going to go into some other versions of June and kind of my own journey with June. Um, I first saw it um, in the early 2000s maybe, I am on Channel 4, um, and I, I wasn't at that point, I knew who David Lynch was, but I, I didn't know much about them. I think I'd seen Blue Velvet, um, which confused me. But um, I saw this, David Lynch's tune, um, which thankfully gave us the working relationship with Kerry McLaughlin and endures to this day, if you believe rumours, that they're still working together on a new secret Netflix project. Um, but interestingly, on every version of this, Sting gets centre stage, even though he's you know, hardly in the bloody movie. Um, but he's in his underwear for some of it as well. 
and yes, when people enjoy sting in his underwear. Um, this was considered a joke for the longest time. It was a punchline. Um, I always thought it was better than people said. It's yeah, it's a mess. It's scuzzy. It's you know misshapen. It needs a, a script overhaul. But the performances are spot on. Um, you know, Everett McGill's you know cool in it. You've got Patrick Stewart for God's sake. Captain Picard is there. It's a sci-fi with Patrick Stewart. Get this in Life Force on your set for your next generation binge. Um, but this is the, the first Blu-ray I had in this. Um, and it gives you the two different cuts. Um, David Lynch disowned the, the extended cut um, because he didn't, didn't want his name attached to it. Um, so he doesn't talk about it in interviews anymore, which is a shame. But I can understand why, because he was kind of fucked over and messed around with by the studios and Dino De Laurentiis and stuff. Um, so the good thing about it failing is that David Lynch said never again for big movies and then went on to become David Lynch. So, you know, he followed up with Blue Velvet, Wild at Heart, you know, we know what happened from there. So, so David Lynch got to be David Lynch. Nobody's career really suffered here acting wise. You know, you've got Jose Ferrer and big names. I'm pretty sure Sting's been okay since then. I don't think he's been hurting for a penny or two. But this is just a, uh, an old American disc. I mean, you know, what kind of plain, plain Jane that is. A couple of special features. But nothing to write home about. And you know me, if it's David Lynch, if it's June, I need to have more. So Arrow Video um, announced uh, that they were releasing June, and I went, yeah. And then they said there's going to be a feature length documentary about the making of, and I went, yeah. And then they said, oh, actually, that's been delayed for a month and we're not going to wait. So that's not going to be on it anymore. And I went, yeah, bastards. Um, so, you know. I ditched the Arrow version and went to Germany, not literally, I just used Amazon, um, and got this, which is the the media book, as they call them, um, and it's a very Frank Herbert like cover, which I like. Um, and this is the 4K, which, back if you want to see it with the original artwork there. Um, a beginning is a very delicate time. You know, that's the uh, uh, the time for taking the most delicate care, uh, that the balances are correct. Um, that is what every sister of the Bene Gesserit knows. I think I got that quote right. <laughs> that's quite sad that I remembered that. Um, but yeah, you know, you've just got a nice book. There's the Baron floating around. There's, there's Kale. We all love Kale. Cooper needs a haircut, but yeah, nice. Roxanne, you don't have to wear that dress tonight. Um, yeah, for some reason, these, these, you know, that's a joke. Um, these go in on Sting, and there's, there's Baron Harkin. I mean, that is fantastic. Uh, Hodorowski's version, that was going to be Orson Welles. And can't you just imagine Orson Welles flying about like that? Wonderful. Um, the 90 minute feature length making of turns out it wasn't actually as good as I thought it would be uh, so hmm, it's it's still a good watch but it's it's nothing particularly insightful because most of the main people are either dead or don't particularly want to talk about Dune so you can actually probably just do your own reading online um, so you know I thought well you know me and Arrow we go back a long way you know we're like an old married couple so I went back to on hands and knees and, and picked up this which again is very Frank Herbert looking uh, cover and this is just a Blu-ray so it's not a 4k um, but it's um, got millions and millions of special features as you can see there absolutely jam-packed and Shirley McGowan is a big booklet find some oh look first thing I'll open up Sting they all seem to double down on Sting Sting in less than 10% of this movie ah here you go fucking yeah Agent Cooper and Captain Picard that's what you want yeah that'll do it Max von Sydow brilliant he's the the doctor don't 
don't trust him if his uh, if his wife's gone missing any time recently. But yeah, um, and there's um, what's her face, uh, Linda Hunt. And then we all, she was quite a big deal in the eighties. Um, but you know, a solid cast, even though people kind of kind of mocked the film. I mean, the cast would never the problem. Jose Ferrer, and then um, his son would obviously go on to be Albert in Twin Peaks. Uh, Miguel Ferrer, uh, Virginia Madsen, Everett McGill, Big Ed from Twin Peaks. Uh, Kevin McMillan is the bad and obviously Sean Phillips is the Reverend Mother. Jürgen Prochnow from, um, oh, what Bond movie was he in? Mm, is it Never Say Never Again? Anyway, he's the sub, sub commander in Daz Um Sting, um, Dean Stockwell. Um, unfortunately, just recently lost uh, Dean Stockwell, didn't we? You know, um, who sang um, Candy Color Clown, The Color Simon, and, and uh, Blue Velvet. So, if nothing else, David Lynch may not have enjoyed making the film, but he got a lot of friends out of it by the, by the sounds of it. And there's Everett McGill, there's Big Ed. From, uh, and he was also in Licence to Kill in 1989 for Bond fans. And look, more sting, in case you needed more sting. Oh, there's more pictures of Sting in this than there are in a police box set. It's kind of bizarre. Um, and it comes with ye old poster. Look, two, three. Oh, uh, is that the right way up? Yes. Hold that back a bit so we can see it. Nine panels. That's nice. It's very Frank Herbert looking. It looks like it could have been one of the covers. Um, but you flip it over and you get the original UK quad, which I absolutely love. It's, it's, it's the cover I remember seeing. So yeah, fantastic. Fantastic. So we'll put that aside. But, I'm a bit of a weird though, you know that. Uh, that is David Lynch. So Arrow had also announced you know, we are doing another version of it, which has got an even more special thing in media again. And I went, <laughs> you're not getting me twice at all. I said I wasn't buying your version once. I'm not buying it twice. Yeah, but I bought it twice. Um, so this is the original artwork. Um, but it isn't just the same box, don't worry. No, no, it's kind of similar. But as you can see, it's much bigger. So there must be something else in here. I wonder what it could be. But I know, but I'll show you. Uh, there's another look at the special features. Make sure up a little bit there. Um, very similar artwork in the back because it's from the original quad. This one has a steel book with the original art. And yunk. some cards, Adol's traditional, you know. Advertisement for one of the other ones, This, in this case Over the Edge, uh, which I've got, you might have seen in my uh, Best of 2021 Blu-rays. Um, and if you didn't watch that, why not? Um, but yeah, some art cards, as as, uh, as is their one. Oh look, Sting! Oops, Sting. I think Sting produced this fucking box. And then on the back, you get the, um, the June quad again but yeah some, some nice hard cards there. there's Kale and Kale and his missus she's played by Zendaya in the new version and a lot of people said why is Zendaya in this for two minutes well there's a part two coming she's got a much bigger part trust me uh, she becomes quite an important character as June continues uh, last one there but did I buy did I buy just because it's a steel book and it's got some art cards. Am I that sad? Well, yes, is the answer to that. But yeah, it's not the only reason. Not the only reason. So you get the same book. Exactly the same. You get a different poster. So in this one, you get. You get a more full version of the quads, uh, all that, which we've seen. But then you get the original actual theatrical poster, which is nice. So I'm at that side that I still book some art cards and the original poster would make me buy it. Again, probably yes. But um, the real draw, 
for moi is this, uh, the design of Dune, which is 100 pages thick. And I'll flip back so you can see a little bit better. Let's do this. It's 100 pages of pre-production artwork um, for the making of the film. Um, how well are you going to put this up? Is it? Yeah, fast. Probably easier for this. <laughs> Yay! So, if I just pick some random pages. So, yeah. For some people, this would be so what? It's a bunch of, bunch of design stuff. But th this is David Lynch's Dune. If we can agree on one thing, is that the designs are all absolutely stunning, totally original. They're Giger esque, even though Giger was the one which we attached to do the uh, Hodreski version. But just, you know, look at these designs, it's fantastic. So, that's, I mean, that even looks like the, um, the baby in the Razorhead, you know. Speaking of which, Jack Nance is in here as well from the Razorhead, another David Lynch uh, family member. So, I won't show you absolutely every page here, but we'll, you know, if we jump around a little bit. Get an idea of what's what here and what they're doing. So really, a bit like the Ghostbusters shooting script from my last video. This is this is uh, for fanboys. Um, uh, you know, this is purely for people that are interested in behind the scenes and ongoing stuff like that. So it's not for your casuals. Casual fans, wait for your standard editions. It's not patronising, it's just the way things are. Um, I mean, the special features, three three discs, so they go really into the weeds. We're talking stuff about, there's even documentaries about the toys and the collectibles that were manufactured for a film that no kid saw. Um, so, you know, yeah. Um, comprehensive doesn't even begin to cover it. Um, but if you take this in the German version, you've got you've got David Lynch's June cover, believe me. Yeah, believe me. But, you might think, well that is the only other version of June, isn't it? Do you remember? Well, it's a bit middle in there, wasn't it? Do you remember? Kaylee, I'm so sorry. Yeah, Kaylee from Berlin. Um, Frank Herbert's June. Now this is not, as the cover is kind of designed to make you think, yet another version of the David Lynch movie, but this is the sci-fi version. Uh, from 2000, 2001, starring Alec Newman as Paul, um, Ian McNeese as the Baron, William Hurt as Duke Leto, um, and this was actually really good. This was TV budget, obviously, but it was the most expensive TV miniseries at the time, um, and it looks fantastic. For, you, know, you have to bear in mind it's 20 year old TV, so it's not going to look amazing um, by today's standards, but yeah, and Alec Newman, he's a little bit old. It's still really good. I like how Newman's got intensity to him that that um, that Kim McLaughlin didn't have, and, and uh, um, what's his name? Timothy Chalamet don't have. He's got a real intensity to him as Paul, which helps when it becomes more deep, you know, halfway through, um, as we'll see in part two of Denis Villeneuve's tune. Um, and so this is recommend you pick this up dirt cheap. Um, the sci-fi channel and just watch your covers all because they do have versions that try and trick you into thinking you're buying maybe the David Lynch one you know so just watch watch it but you can watch it what I would do though is I would watch if you haven't seen the older versions of June Lynch and, and, and sci-fi channel I would watch the Nevio News and then wait a couple of years and then watch the, the uh, sci-fi channel ones and and David Lynch's. Don't spoil it for yourself. Um, yeah, I, I don't think you should jump the gun. I think wait for Dini and uh, Dini to um, to let you experience the story the way he wants to tell it, and then go back. I think that would be a smart way to do it. Um, however, the cool thing about this, as he drops the postcard, the cool thing about this is, to date, it is the only version of Dune. Um, that spawned a sequel um, and I'm not counting even though this is a sequel because that's just the one story it split into two. This is an actual sequel of, a, of the novel so yeah this is um, novel three Children of June which kind of condenses novel two and three 
uh, with James McAvoy there from uh, Shameless. Um, gone on a big career since, but this will be his first big American role. Um, about the time he did Mr. Tumnus in Narnia. Uh, Susan Sarandon's also there. Um, but it's not. It's related to the first. It's a direct sequel. So Alec Newman's back as as Paul as Maudib, um, and there's the McNeese back. Um, so it's it's a direct continuation. And um, what's cool about that is, and again, I don't want to spoil anything, but it goes into the theme that I love throughout Herbert's novels: the be careful where you back. If you take away absolute power from one and give it to someone else. You've still got a dictator. And they may just believe something different, but you've still got a dictator. You've still got one person calling the shots. So that's you know when when, when I showed you that hype sticker the, or the back of the thing that said Star Wars. Star Wars is a hero's journey. This is not Dune is not a hero's journey. It's an anti-hero, and I don't mean anti-hero and so I mean anti-hero story. It's about not following messiahs. Not giving any one person or one people too much power, but sharing it amongst people like the the Fremen do. Um, whereas when Paul gets too much power, and you start to see it in this certainly, you know, the natives start to get a bit restless. Um, so yeah, again, I think you should, if you've only seen Denis Villeneuve, wait, watch his sequel, then go back. And watch Lynch's. Then, if you're a reader, start on Herbert. Watch, uh, read the novels, and it'll take you a while because there's loads of them. Uh, as I say, his son started picking up when he passed away. And then I would definitely go back at some point and give these relative obscurities a chance. You can get them dirt cheap. So I don't think they should be forgotten in the bargain bin because they are. To date, the most extensive version of Dune, they're four and a half hours long each, so, you know, there's there's nine hours of Dune in, in these, and I think people don't even realise that. Um, and it looks great, it looks absolutely terrific. It doesn't look like Denis Verneuve, but it's not good to have to spend, so, you know. Well, um, I think that about wraps it up, I don't want to wobble on too long, well, I find my usual half hour anyway, they always seem to be half an hour. Um, so... Well, uh, that enjoy your Sunday, I suppose, and uh, have some space on me, because after all, he who controls the space controls the universe. Virtue quote number four, five. But uh, well, remember the mystery of life isn't a problem to solve, but a reality to experience. Virtue quote number six or seven. And again, get Wilson from rehab. You, and we're all, we're all praying for you, guys. Thank you very much for watching. As always, I've been David, your host for most peace for the least. And remember, I know traditional sign off. Let's be very careful out there. Mother Mercy, my dears. Mother Mercy.